Hi, it's Reg of Marvelous Ministries. Seriously, can we try to open our eyes to what it must have been like for Moses to finally have an encounter with God in the burning bush? And you see, he didn't quite fully get it, even when he got to the promised land and was not allowed to go in. When you live your life apart from God and you're selfish and you don't love and care about everybody else, I mean, we'll love some people, but we won't love everybody. And then when the one who created everybody, who loves everybody, changes your heart, gives you a new life to be like him, and you start to love and care about everybody. And you think about the way you've lived your life. And then you have to live with that knowledge of good and evil the rest of your life. Knowing that you cause the one who loves everybody to suffer. We who lived selfishly cause him who lived selflessly to suffer. Can you imagine looking in the eyes of Christ, the judgment seat, the one that you're finally in Christ with, and see the love in his eyes for you, and remember the love he has for everybody else that you hurt? I can't imagine Moses thinking about the person he killed and buried in the sand. Can't imagine David and Bathsheba thinking about their little love fest, which wasn't love. The marriage, knowing they lost the child. Bathsheba lost her husband. David killed her husband. And all that knowledge of evil. And how can you get to the end of your life and say, it was good? with all that evil mixed in. I'm having a hard enough time with that myself. Broken people, breaking other people, hurt people, hurt people. The only way to stop the continuation of generational sin is to not spread it to the next generation. Can you imagine David and Bathsheba being different? Moses being different? Not learning about good by experiencing the evil that comes along with the knowledge of good and evil. Can you imagine standing before your Savior like the young David, living in faith, defeating Goliath, and not enjoying sin for a season with Bathsheba. If none of that ever happened and David's life ended and he was victorious the whole way through, can you imagine that one? The knowledge of good. Where's the evil? Oh, well, good overcame evil. I didn't go down that wrong path. How many of us would love to erase things from our life? Not to ignore them, not to pretend they didn't happen. See, that's the parable of the Good Samaritan. Those that just walk on the other side of the road. Maybe it's not the traveler that was beaten and left for dead. That can be somebody else in our past. Maybe before we became Christians. Maybe when we're living according to the world's way of living. The knowledge of good and evil. The wrong way of living. Those broken relationships. The people in our past who hurt us. Or we hurt. And then we just walked away. Left them in their pain and their suffering. I've experienced going back and reaching out to the people I said I loved, 
30, almost 40 years ago, reached out to apologize for the horrifying season of life we share together. Why? Because I still love and care about them. Not in a knowledge of good and evil way, led by my flesh, but in my new heart, redeemed by Christ. To have not let go of those who hurt me and that I hurt. And I reach back because of how I hurt them. Why? To help them. Do they have old scars and wounds from when we shared life together? Old scars and wounds that didn't heal properly have large, larger scars, more painful, sensitive scars. Scars that remind them of a time where they got hurt, which could cause fear and, and apprehension about entering into some sort of relationship again with somebody else. That fear that it inhibits them from an abundant life, from living in the fullness of Christ. I wish I didn't have all the evil experiences in my life. The stuff done to me as a child by those that were supposed to love me or to myself or to those that I love and care about. That's why I share this transparently, what's happened in my life. It's not all, not all the facts and details, not to expose other people and things that went on but to just to share the pain and the destruction that it does inside of you. The things that you can't go back in time and change. The things you can't undo. I would imagine David, I would hope, being a man after God's own heart, would have felt horrified for what he did to Bathsheba and her husband and to all those that knew him and loved him who were robbed of sharing life with him. If his parents were still alive, maybe he had siblings. He was an uncle. He was a friend. He was a faithful soldier. And because of lust and a desire for a flesh-led life, sin for a season, David destroyed him and thus hurt the heart of God. And it hurts your own when your heart is finally right with God. Amen.